Hello, my name is Faye and I'm a speech language pathologist and clinical program assistant at the Hannon Center. In this video, we'll discuss people games, what they are, why they're important, and then we'll go through six tips that you can think of when using people games with your child. In our last video, we talked about helping your child cope with his sensory needs. As we mentioned, some children with autism have difficulty processing the information they take in from their senses. They may be undersensitive or oversensitive to certain stimuli. And the first step is to understand how your child processes this information. Children who are undersensitive to certain sensations may actually seek out more of this sensation. As this is happening, you may see repetitive behaviors. So things like constantly moving, running, jumping, or climbing, activating a sound-based or musical toy again and again. Although it can be tempting to try to stop these actions or behaviors, this doesn't usually work very well. If your child has a strong sensory preference, he'll likely find another way to meet this need. What would actually work better is if you can use these sensory preferences in interactive games that you can play together with your child. Today we're going to talk about how you can create fun and interactive games that incorporate your child's sensory needs so that you're not only satisfying your child's sensory need, but you're also creating opportunities for communication and interaction. These games are called people games. People games are games without toys. You just need two people. Some people games involve music and movement, as in games like Ring Around the Rosy, and some people games just have movement or action, like as in Tickle or Chase. What's great about people games is they naturally incorporate your child's sensory preferences. This will likely motivate your child to stay in the interaction, and because his sensory need is being met, he's more likely to notice you and pay attention to you. But there are other advantages too. People games are usually played the same way each time, and they have their own built-in structure. That's why people games can be a great option for children with autism, who typically learn best through structure and repetition. Children can learn a lot about communication and interaction through these predictable activities. In people games, children can learn about how to engage and notice and respond to others, how to take turns within this back and forth interaction, and they can even learn how to imitate others' actions, gestures, sounds, or words. The key is that people games should be fun for both players. When both the child and the adult are having fun, the game will likely last longer. And it's through this shared enjoyment that the stage is set for further learning. As I mentioned in the previous video, the first step is to determine your child's sensory preferences. Once you figure out the sensations that your child really likes, then you can think about a people game that incorporates these sensory preferences. Here are just a few examples, but keep in mind that it's always best to consult a professional about what might work best for your child. For a child who seeks out movement like running, a game like Chase or Red Light Green Light might be helpful. For a child who enjoys rocking back and forth, it might work to try sitting across from them, holding hands, and then rocking back and forth as you sing row, row, row your boat together. Children who enjoy spinning might enjoy games like spinning in an office chair or ring around the rosy. For children who enjoy jumping, you could try joining them, holding their hands and jumping together or even just bopping with them. And you could add a song to the game like five little monkeys jumping on a bed. A child who enjoys swinging may enjoy swinging on swings, or even a game where they're wrapped up in a blanket and an adult holds each end of the blanket, swinging the child back and forth. A child who likes the feel of soft fabrics or textures might enjoy a tickle game with the feather, or a game of peekaboo or hide and seek where they hide behind a really soft blanket. Tip number one, give the game a name. Use the name of the game once you've decided on it repeatedly throughout the time that you're playing. And if your child's starting to talk, he may even eventually start to say the name of the game. Tip number two, play the game the same way each time. 
When you repeat the same actions and words, this adds structure and predictability to the game, and it helps your child learn what will come next, and maybe even what he could say or do in the game. Tip number three, play the game several times. Don't be afraid to play the game over and over if your child likes it. The more he plays the game, the more familiar he'll become with it. Tip number four, give your child a chance to participate in his own way. Once your child's familiar with the game, create opportunities for him to do or say something to keep the game going. For example, if you're swinging him in the blanket, pause every once in a while and see if he'll say something to keep the game going or maybe do something like give you the corner of the blanket. Tip number five, Help your child send a message. If you pause during the game and your child doesn't give you a cue to keep the game going, like saying something or doing something, you can help him out by giving him a hint. For example, you could model the word go. You could point or gesture to the blanket. Or you could even physically help him hand you part of the blanket to keep the game going. Tip number six, end the game the same way each time. When your child walks away or indicates that he no longer wants to play the game, you can say or do something to mark the end of that game. You could, for example, say all done, sign or use a gesture to show that you're finished the game. And by ending the game in the same way, you're giving your child a model that he can eventually use himself to end the game. Sometimes it might be hard to get a people game going with your child. It may be that you've thought of the sensory preferences and thought of a game that might work, but it's really just not working with your child. And sometimes it's actually hard to think of a game that incorporates your child's sensory preferences. It's always helpful to consult a professional who can help you work specifically with your child. In particular, speech-language pathologists with experience and training in Hannon's More Than Words program have the experience working with families to use people games as a context for learning. If the people games are based on your child's interests and preferences, he'll be more likely to stay in the game longer and enjoy it. Remember, it's having fun together and shared enjoyment that really sets the stage for learning. So your child will be more likely to notice you, interact, and communicate with you in these fun activities. Thank you for watching and feel free to post a comment to let us know how it went. For more information about communication in children with autism, visit the Autism Corner on the Hannon website. Have a great day.